Eric here. He's, where's he at? Where's Eric? Where's my friend Eric? Where is he? Come on, Eric. Bring your driver out here. Not right. We love kids for golf, don't we? Yes. He's a, he, beat, he broke one of Tiger Woods' records here. He's a local kid here. He wanted. He, I, he had one of my old books. Come on, Eric. He's, he uses uh, blade clubs. What a legend. Come on. <laughs> Now, Eric, how old are you, son? Ten. And how long have you been playing golf? Four years. Love it. And what's the best thing about golf? That you can play a long time. That's right. You don't have to go home hardly ever. That a boy. I love that divot right there. That tells me he went you know, down on that ball, right? Yeah. What do you think about when you hit the ball? Mr. Tim gives you lessons? Yeah. What do you, what is, what's your, what do you think of when you, when you do your golf? What I'm going to do next in my school. Tim taught me to do. Do that, yeah. The hands inside of the club. That's right. Back, back. You come back, and when you're right there, you go back a little bit. Perfect. Then you go. That's, that's, Love it. that's a Christmas card right there. You gotta make a Christmas card out of that. <laughs> Alright, let's see you do that one more, Eric. Oh, wait, one more. One more. One more, Kate. One more. Here we go. You've got a great swing, and I'll tell you, what, I'll tell you why you're going to be a good golfer. You've got a great grip. You ever seen a good player that had a bad... You ever seen a, a bad player that had a good grip? Anyone? Has anyone ever seen a bad player that had a good grip? <laughs> Ever? I've seen good players that had bad grips. I've never seen a bad player have a good grip. Look at that grip. Couldn't be bad, could it? It's fun, huh? All right, Eric. What other, what other dirter, legendary dirters we have here wants to come up and hit one? Martin, you got any ones you want to pick on? How about Tim? Tim. 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 You're a club pro, right? Yep, I have a golf school up there and helps Martin. And Martin yeah. actually helped me more than anybody. I've had the uh, Penny, Ledbetter, McLean, all in my position. It's all about dynamics and he also inspired me to think outside the box and I was to teach of the year. Fantastic. You wanna uh, do you wanna just hit a few wedge shots, something easy? Or what was the big change for you when you started working with dynamics or um, when, did you, when, when you joined Secret and Dirt, how did it change your life? <laughs> <laughs> well, I no longer went to bed and my wife did. I was up looking at videos, so... No, it's okay. Um, so what was your, thing, what's your interpretation of what Martin's been saying? This is good because this is a guy that will be teaching you guys, right? Yeah. Here, here's the, the thing that I got from Martin is I've always looked at it where if you took the dynamics or things that are traditionally taught in golf and you tried to put them in other sports, it doesn't work. <clears throat> so you wouldn't you wouldn't immobilize the head if you throw a ball. Right. You wouldn't, you know, move away like you talked about before. But if you take the stuff that you guys talked about, how the body winds and how you use your feet, all that is it whether it's in boxing, tennis, any mm -hmm. other sport, and now bring that into golf, it makes sense. And so what has helped me in my teaching is if people have done other sports, <clears throat> now I'm not trying to teach them something that goes against everything they've than their whole life playing baseball and other sports. Now it's just like it. And I'm probably the only teacher that has a sword in his bag, a whip, chains, <laughs> and rope. <laughs> so. I, I, I thought Valentine's Day was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that Martin helped me a lot with was I am very right-eye dominant. And so one of the things that he helped me do, and if you're right, I dominate, it's a curse of death, but Martin can help you get over it, is you start centering the swing on that eye. And then one of the reasons I was asking you about the hips is what was happening is because I get locked up 
I would start to move off the ball and then my head would go cattywampus because my right eye is trying to see it. And so I've gotten a lot into how kind of hips swivel. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. 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 So I'll shut up and hit a ball and so I, hopefully I don't shake it. You're doing well. The other right. thing is with, it's the right foot because if you look at I get that. some of the better players like Hogan, they're very much under the ground. You know, my, a lot of your stuff, it's, you stay planted on the ground. I have a couple swivel boards yeah. I have people stand on, and you can't swing if your feet are swiveling. The funny thing about the USGA is they won't let me qualify for the U.S. Open in spikes, right? They, they you have to, but if you make the U.S. Open, you're allowed to wear them. It's crazy, right? You can't qualify. So when I wear soft spike, I literally, that was, that was pretty right there. I was watching you. Uh, I literally cannot, uh, I can't use my feet. I'm, I'm 40% less power with soft spikes, but Tim, this could be a problem for you, me talking about soft spikes. <laughs> but uh, if I was going to play without spikes, I wouldn't use soft spikes. I want to be, because with these shoes, I'm leather on the ground through spikes. And the soft spikes give me a, a little layer there. I'd rather be flat footed. In other words, you know what I'm saying? As opposed to having nubs. Yeah. I can't wait to go to Champions next week and play with spikes on. Yeah, but you won't know what to do. But uh, no, we'll have an extra 40% of power. Okay. <laughs> so. <That's a> <laughs>